Beckham Sentinel has only one binary called safe. You use this safe binary to interact with VSecom safe. As a quick note, VSecom Sentinel is the only interface to operate VSecom safe. As always, if you find value in what you learned today, please give us a star on GitHub at github.com slash VMware Tanzu slash Secrets Manager. Your support helps others discover this incredible technology. And back to our example. Using VSecom Sentinel as a dedicated single point of entry to the system provides an added layer of security. For example, you can register secrets to SAFE using Sentinel and then delete the Sentinel deployment so that no one can alter those secrets or update or delete secrets later. You will have to redeploy VSecom Sentinel, which will require admin level access to the cluster, which will make life much harder for an intruder. So let's execute SAFE H on the Sentinel pod to get a help output. The output of SAFE H will explain how to use the SAFE command providing short descriptions for all the command line flags. In the following videos, we'll use these flags in action. Also, you can check out this link for further documentation and usage examples. But before I get there, I'd like to show you something. When I run kubectl get secret -n vsecom system, I'll get this vsecom safe age key secret. This secret is tightly secured by Kubernetes RBAC policies, and only VSecom safe or a cluster admin can access it. Since I'm a cluster admin, I can see its value. Let's describe the secret to have more detail about it. Kubectl describe secret VSecom safe age key dash n VSecom system, and we have a key underscore txt as a data value here. This key TXD value is automatically computed during VSecom Safe's initial bootstrapping. Let's see its value just out of curiosity. Now, suppose you are on a production system. In that case, it's essential to back up this secret object using Valero or a similar tool, because losing this secret will make it impossible to decrypt the encrypted backups that VSecom Safe creates that part taken care of. Let's play with the Sentinel CLI a bit. For example, when we execute safe-l, where L stands for list, we'll list the available secrets. Since this is a clean installation and there are no registered secrets yet, the output of this command will be an empty array. So let's create a secret, safe-w example, dash s our secret, dash n default, here, Dash n means namespace that the workload that will receive the secret will be in, and dash w is the name of our workload as defined by its cluster spiffy ID. Let's press enter. Okay, so we have registered the secret. Let's list the secrets to see if we indeed succeeded. And yes, we have. I can see one secret in my array. One thing to note here is that VSecom Sentinel will never display the value of the secret to the operator. That's a design decision to restrict the system's attack surface. Even in the unlikely case that someone gains access to VSecom safe, they cannot read secrets. They can only create, delete or modify them. That makes accessing and exploiting secrets through VSecom Sentinel impossible. In a VSecom system, Secrets are displayed only at the last moment when needed. You cannot reveal them in any other place that is not explicitly given an appropriate spiffy ID. Okay, now, let's delete this secret. This can be done with this dash D flag. Delete the secrets that are associated with the workload named example. And it's done. And once we list the secrets, it will again be an empty array. If you want, you can also encrypt a secret. This is especially useful when you want to store your secrets in a Git repository, but don't want them to be exposed. Once encrypted, only VSecom Safe can know how to decrypt this secret. Here, dash S is the value of the secret, and dash E means encrypt it and return the result. When we run it, we get this text as the output. I'll copy it and save it in an environment variable. Export val equals this encrypted text. 
Now I can register the encrypted secret to my workload using the dash E flag. This means that I'll provide an encrypted value instead of a plain text value, and vSecomSafe will have to decrypt the secret before dispatching it to the workloads. When I list the secrets, I can see the secret that we just registered in the command's output. And that's all for this episode. Next up, we'll use Sentinel to demonstrate several VMware Secrets Manager use cases. And until then, keep your secrets secret.